goodness of God. Bill Glenn last week gave a sermon on the goodness of God. We sometimes get complacent when we say God is good. Uh, I know I grew up, when I grew up in church, if someone would say God is good, you would say all the time. Or if you sneeze and someone would say God bless you, but the last thing that they're thinking about when they're saying that is God. They're just saying it because it's just the knee-jerk reaction. But God isn't just good. God is amazing. God is wonderful. God creates beings that can do designs and make perfect works of art. That's all God. And he didn't have to either. God gave us the ability to create children. Beautiful children. Perfect children. God did that. There's no way as much stuff as we as humans can create that I can believe we just got here and, and just started because of an explosion and fungus. And for that, I say God is a lot more than good. God is perfect. Amen? Amen. Today, uh, my assignment, I will be preaching on God's justice. I'd like to thank Adrian for giving me this easy topic of God's justice. Um, if he was here, I'd thank him a lot. But uh, I looked up the definition of justice, and it's just behavior or treatment. But if you look at the synonyms of justice, it's fairness, justness, fair play, fair-mindedness, equity, even-handedness, impartiality, objective, uh, objectivity, honesty, righteousness, morality. And I kind of the words that kind of hit me when I was reading that definition was equity and morality. So there's this comic book called The Punisher. And uh, it's, it's, it's make-believe, it's a made-up story. But it's about this guy named Frank Castle. And what Frank Castle does every day is he'll go to the courthouse. And he'll listen to, uh, you know, trials. And let's say one guy, he committed a really, really heinous, dangerous act to, and, and hurt a lot like a terrorist. He did something that maybe a terrorist would do. And for some reason, he got off on a technicality, and he was found not guilty. The punisher would go make sure that he paid for what he did in a not-so-nice way. If you see the punisher, he has guns, he has grenades, he has a whole weaponry of arsenal to go make sure that that person pays for what they did. But in his seeking just, in, his, in him seeking justice, he acts in an unjust way. In a true story, there's a man whose daughter was hit by a stray bullet and killed. Uh, the father of this daughter went to court, and when the they brought the defendant out, he jumped over the uh, he jumped over the railing and um, attacked the man. He tried his best to strangle the man. The man was in handcuffs, so the man couldn't defend himself, and he wanted to kill him. In seeking justice, he acted in an unjust manner. A wife caught her husband cheating on her with another woman. In return, she felt she was just to have an affair with another man. The husband found out about it, and not only did he attack his wife, he attacked his wife's uh, new boyfriend. In seeking justice, they both acted in an unjust manner. God told Adam and Eve not to eat from the tree of knowledge. And they both ate from the tree of knowledge. And introduced sin into the entire world. In return, God sent his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus sought justice, and he got justice for us, even though we didn't deserve it. 
Can you see the difference in the stories? The difference in the justice? A lot of times when we think of justice, we think of getting revenge. We often tie justice into revenge. We don't really uh, think about us after that, of what getting revenge does to us and how it makes us just as bad as the uh, person who wronged us in the first place. There are uh, A.W. Tozer, in his book, The Attributes of God, which is also what we're doing this series on, spoke about the justice of God. But not only does God possess justice, like it's a tool that God needs, but God is justice. Amen? Mm -hmm. There are fundamental differences in what we think of justice and who God is. Uh, I'm going to be reading Romans chapter 12, verse 17. Uh, you don't have to turn there. I'm going to be going to a lot of different scriptures today, so let me, I'll just read it. And if you want the scriptures afterwards, I'll be sure to uh, get them to you and so you can uh, study them yourself afterwards. But Romans 12, 17 says, Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible... So far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never, I love that word beloved, by the way. Yeah. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will leave heaping coals, heaping burning coals upon his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. My first point, first off, your enemy, give your enemy water to drink and feed your enemy if he's hungry. That, and, and, and to, my daughter just said, no, uh-uh. She, she, in this society, that's insane. But as Christians, we are called to live a different life. We are in this world. We are not from this world. So just because society says, oh, no, that's my enemy. I, I'll, whatever happens to him happens. That doesn't mean we, as Christians, as believers, as those who follow in the footsteps of Jesus, follow the world's footsteps. We follow God's. Amen? Amen? When Jesus, I can just imagine when Jesus was on that cross and he just got done getting beaten and stabbed and, and they broke his hips so he could fit on the cross the right way and he was in pain and the crown of thorns and, and them mocking him and as he's looking down, the soldiers have his clothes, his, his garments and they're gambling over him. They're like, who's taking this? I'm taking this robe. This robe's worth a lot of money. I want this. I want that. If that were me, I would have been like, angels come down and wipe them all out. But that's not what we're supposed to do. That's not what we're called to do. My first point is revenge is harmful to your work. Revenge is not justice. Another word for worth is equity. Equity comes from the word equal. When you are trying to make your situation equal, do you yourself stay equal? I'll explain that because it sounded a little confusing to me too. If you are doing good at the moment and someone does wrong to you, and in turn you go to do wrong to them, that makes you unequal. That means you go from good to evil. A lot of times as humans, we kind of walk that fine line. When you go into work, sometimes you're like, if the first person says something crazy to me, I'm going to fall into that evil side. Flesh. <laughs> Yet when you, when you fall into your flesh, you become, there's a line that you walk, and you become unequal. And Jesus died so we can always be equal. So when we choose to go against him, and we choose to go against go according to what the world says to do. Sometimes we choose death. It's always a moral situation. If I'm a moral person, 
if is me attacking my coworker for acting up that day a moral thing to do? The father who jumped on the defendant in court was arrested, and he was held in contempt of court. A father who just lost his daughter, who was only trying to kill the man who killed his daughter, was trying to get revenge. In trying to get revenge, he made himself unequal. And he was held in the same cell where the other man was previously, with handcuffs around his wrist. Do you see what revenge can do to you? Yes. Revenge can get you put in the same position as a person who did you wrong did. It's, it, it's, it's crazy to imagine that the father who just lost his daughter was sitting in the same prison cell with his hands behind his back, handcuffed the same exact way as the person who killed his daughter. The woman cheated on her husband because he cheated on her. What does that make that woman? A cheater. It makes her no different. It doesn't matter, oh, well, he did it first, so I'm going to do it. Oh, well, he's a cheater, and you despise cheaters, so you're going to become a cheater? No. That, that, don't make, that don't make that much sense, does it? But that's what you do when you get revenge. How about uh, a, a, a child who gets hit by their sister or brother and has a chance to Go and tell your mother or father, this one hit me. But instead, you say, you know what? Bite their bottom lip and go hit them. Guess what that makes you? Cheater. No different. And guess what usually happens you're when you're both fighting? You both get in trouble. You know why? Because you're no better than the person who hit you first. That is not revenge is not justice. The best thing to do is to forgive and forget. A lot of times people think when you forgive, it's for them. When you forgive, it's for you. That burden is taken off of you when you forgive someone. Uh, let me read uh, another story. Good example of not taking revenge, even if opportunity presents it, is Joseph. Joseph then could no longer control himself before all his attendants, and he cried out. This is Joseph, by the way who had the coat of many colors, who seemed to find favor in his father more than his other brothers, and they attacked him and sold him into slavery. And then he became one of the leaders in the, uh, uh, in the nation that he was in. Yep. Joseph could no longer control himself before all his attendants, and he cried out, have, every, have everyone leave my presence. So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers and he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him, and Pharaoh's household heard about it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. So they knew. When they found out that Joseph was someone important and that they had nowhere to go and they were at the mercy of Joseph, they weren't prepared for justice. They were scared for revenge. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me. When they had done him so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here. Because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now, there has been famine in the land and for the next five years, there will be no plowing and no reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve you, for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Would anyone in here be able to do that? If you were sold into slavery and your brothers who sold you were here begging? I'm... No. It would be it would be difficult. It would be a, a little toughy toughy. Think about it. Yeah, maybe I maybe I would feed them like just a little bit of food, not as much as they. I don't know. But see, that's that's from the wrong mindset. That's from the right. mindset of vengeance. Yeah. That's not the mindset of justice. He knew that God put him in that position to be able to help <coughs> his family in the future. Then it says, uh, 
God, then it says, Joseph threw his arms around his brothers and kissed them and began weeping. And afterwards, he talked to them. Some people, even in this society, would be like, I forgive him, but I ain't talking to him anymore. Or, I forgive him, and I don't want nothing to do with him. No, you're supposed, if, if you forgive, then you're, that, 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 and forgiveness does not mean allow it to happen again, but forgiveness means that you truly, truly forgive them. Uh, I remember last week we were messing with someone who was wronged, and uh, we are kind of giving them a hard time for forgiving. And then right after that, Adrian said, yeah, you're going to do a sermon on this. And I read this story, and immediately I felt foolish. I was like, I can't believe I was. we were just talking about this, and I'm making a big deal about this. And now I'm he's sitting here being taught a lesson. This is how I know the Bible is living, by the way. Amen. This is how I know when you read the Bible, it can say something to you, and it'll say something completely different to someone else, but it's always saying what needs to be said. And when I was reading the Bible this week, it was telling me, like, listen, man, whenever someone finds it in their heart to forgive, don't ever make fun of them for doing so. Because Jesus died on the cross for you, and you still do wrong in God's eyes. My point, two, my point number two is, doing justice is always doing right. Psalms 106, uh, chapter 106, verse 3, Blessed are those who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. Can everybody say at all times, please? At all times. That does not mean do, that does not mean do right unless someone hits you first, or do right unless someone cheats on you, or do right unless someone kills someone you know. It's at all times. Once again, everybody, at all times. What do you At all times. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Anytime you think someone has gotten away with something, it's a lack of faith. And anything that's showing there's a lack of faith is sin. When that father said, that man killed my little baby girl and he's allowed to just walk around and, and live, that was a lack of faith because, as I first said, God is justice. Amen? Amen? Amen. Thank you. And if Amen. God is justice, when something seems like it's not going right in your eyes, that means you do not believe that God is truly in control. That is why it is your job to just let it go, forgive them, and keep it moving. Point number three, God is justice. Romans 14, uh, verse 23 says, for whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. That is the definition of sin. Anytime you go away from faith, that is sinning. So when you do have doubt, when you do think justice isn't being done, and when you don't think God is in control, that is sin. I myself personally have someone in my life who has done great wrongs to me, and this is this is me being 100% transparent, done great wrongs to me, and continues to do so this day. And there are times where I'll get on the phone with my mother and say, why is he still alive? Of all the good people and innocent people that have passed away, have died in accidents, natural disasters, to cancer, all these things, why is he still alive and I struggle with that a lot often off daily I struggle with that and this helps me to understand that maybe he's still alive because I need to forgive and not to let that uh, frustration and that anger and that hate fester because 
I, if someone asked me, even before I started preaching the sermon, hey, have you forgiven that person? I would just say, yeah, I forgave him a long time ago. When, you know, we had a confrontation, I confronted him, forgave him, and kept it moving. But in my heart, I'm still harboring uh, evil and wanting something bad to happen to him. And that is a going away towards sin. So we have to be careful with even people that we personally have a hatred for, when we start doing things like wishing something bad happens to them, then we're starting to become unequal. Then when we want to do something to them, we start becoming more unequal. Then when we do something to them, then we really need some uh, serious repentance. Romans 3.21 But now the righteousness of God has been manifest apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. Everybody say, believe. Believe. For there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fallen short to the glory of God. You want to know what that means? What? You have done something to someone where they probably are becoming unequal because of you. Everybody here has offended someone at some point or some time in their lives. For all have fallen short of the glory of God. And are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So just as Christ was on that cross being so wrong by people whom he didn't do anything to, and showing grace and being forgiven, we in the same way need to show grace in being forgiven. Choose grace over revenge. Because if we look to give someone what they deserve, we just may one day get what we deserve. Instead, love whomever you can as much as possible. Forgive those who've done wrong to you when you do. It takes that burden off of your back. Amen? Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for sending your son to die on the cross for us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you forgave us whenever we've done wrong, Lord, in your eyes. Whenever we've hurt you, Lord. Whenever we've chosen the world over you. Whenever we've chosen our own personal desires over you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the